until we're not wizards. Can I hear it? Yes. Welcome to another episode of We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard. I'll be your host for September. Uh, now, joining me tonight, I've got a lady by the name of Deborah Honig Parizek, who um, is on the show to talk about uh, her role playing system um, called the Everyverse RPG. Um, it's an interesting story because it was her husband, Dennis, who originally designed the system and they worked on it together. And uh, unfortunately, uh, he passed away and Deborah has decided to um, take his work, take what he did and put it together and uh, bring it to everybody um, so they can have a chance to to play this unique uh, system. Um so, without further ado, um, here's the episode. Uh, how how long have you been doing this for then? How long's I mean? Uh, how long? In- I I got uh, I got laid off in December of uh, 2014 from my uh, my um, corporate my last corporate job uh, where I was uh, an IT professional. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess it was about mid-2015 when we had a role-playing gaming reunion with my old gaming group, that uh, group that my late husband and I had yeah. back in Iowa, and uh, uh, the children of two of the guys in there. And we had a great weekend, played for like 19 hours and, and had a fantastic time. And I got home from that and I realized, oh my God, I have a product. I can try to get this out the door. So uh, I guess since uh, mid-2015 is when I, I started pulling things off of uh, the CDs that thankfully I backed up before I got rid of the computers that we used to use and uh, um, and started making the books and, and uh, getting out there and doing, uh, well, everything, promotion and so on. You've been, you been into kind of like the role-playing kind of stuff long then? I mean, if we set the way yeah, back um, clock, I mean, is this, I mean, were you kind of like... Um, I guess the kind of nerd <laughs> stereotype kind <laughs> well, of pouring over books um, and stuff my, like that. My late husband was was the nerd slash geek, especially when it came to gaming. He he got into it in the seventies sometime. Right. You know, with the little the little white box of uh, the TSR yeah. uh, um, books, Dungeons and Dragons. That and and I didn't get into it until nineteen eighty one. Um, when I really, 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 really wanted to play a Star Wars adventure. And this was way, way before any of the actual Star Wars stuff came out. And uh, um, uh, Return of the Jedi had just come out. Yeah, no, I guess so, so it was 83. I'm sorry, 83. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so I really wanted to play an adventure after seeing that movie. So we used our rules and uh, then came up with an adventure. And I was hooked ever since then. So I, I finally started gaming with the rest of the group, and mm-hmm. uh, um, I, w- I was the only uh, wife um, that would join in. So our gaming reunion was uh, uh, in 2015 was nine guys and me. <laughs> <laughs> did you have? Did yep, you man- I, Did you hold on to everything that you had then? I mean, did you? Did you? Uh, pretty you, much. You know, are you a bit of a hoarder when it comes to the kind of like your RPG history, kind of? holding on to things and kind of do you uh, keep like your character sheets and things like that i 
I have found uh, the character sheets, and I found, I think, most of everything that Den left behind, which is uh, mm. we've got uh, gaming logs from uh, uh, all the campaigns that we've done over the years, uh, um, all of his work, some of which I found, uh, um, like World Creation, uh, after I'd already gotten our first book out the door. All right. And so I was like, ah, V2. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, or, and or a world book, which I've heard that folks really like. Um yeah, thank goodness I kept everything. I um, yeah, I had the, the special box for all of his stuff, and uh, um, I even kept uh, some of the stat books that he used in, in development. And uh, thank goodness I did, because I, uh, um, I'm having such a fantastic time now uh, going out and, and uh, getting this out the door, talking to all of you podcasters, going out mm. to the game shops. My goodness, I never thought... <laughs> ever thought that I would be a game master. And uh, so I've been doing that. And, and then we did Gen Con over here in Indianapolis uh, at the beginning of this month. And that was a fantastic time. It was just uh, an amazing sea of humanity. Um, we uh, we had four great demo sessions and we uh, we sold books through the IGDN booth. And, yeah. and it's it's been a, an amazing ride so far. Was that, your first Gen- was that your first Gen Con then? Oh, geez. I think I was at Gen Con maybe 30 years ago or something like that when Den and I lived up in Wisconsin. I think it was before we it moved to Indianapolis. Mm. And then we uh, we headed south uh, um, in the early 90s and, and have uh, ended up in Texas. And, and so uh, Gen Con was quite a ways away, no matter where it was in the upper Midwest, What's... until this past month. How did you two meet? Oh, gosh, how did we meet? How did you meet? Because this isn't uh, just about yeah, it was... I mean, that's the role-playing, but it's probably the real-life stuff as well, I think, is going to be. Indeed. Um, yep, there's a there's always a story behind there it. And I, um, I, um, that My story about the Star Wars thing is how I got into uh, role-playing gaming. Uh, how Den and I met, we met in college, and uh, I was dating another guy. Yeah. Um, I believe his name was Steve and we ended up at a, at a party and Dennis was late getting there because he couldn't find his girlfriend at the time. Wow. And, and, uh, so then they finally showed up and, uh, um, I don't remember exactly the scoop in the party. This was like 1979 or something. So I barely remember it. <laughs> and, uh, um, Den said that the, the first time he saw me, he knew that I was going to be his wife. And I thought he was a bit of a dork. <laughs> did he have yeah, his D&D his books under his arm? Did he have his Dungeons and Dragons? Did he have a staff? No. Was he, he dressed he like a wizard? Have, uh, no wizard, but he, he did have uh, some kind of unruly red hair. And really? uh, uh, he was kind of skinny. He kind of kind of looked like the, the classic kind of geek guy. And and uh, he, he did fill out in his later years, but uh, um, he was pretty thin when we met. Um, and let's see, what else? Uh, oh, yep, I kind of thought he was a dork because he couldn't find his girlfriend, and they were supposed to come to this party. And then uh, um, we got together after that, and the rest is history. We, we had been together for um, over 25 years, and then uh, um, uh, 22 and a half, we were married. Anyway, yeah, he passed uh, several years ago from uh, um, uh, cancer metastasis. We thought wow. he was fine, but... Uh, um, yep. Uh, then he left me this treasure to, uh, to, um, to bring out to the world. And I'm, I'm uh, so honored to do it. Did you, um, did you continue to play kind of while you were kind of married? Was it still, was it something that you would sit down with a group of friends? I mean, you have, you mentioned you kind of, you did the re- reunion, but mm-hmm. was kind of the role playing scene, was that a big part of kind of like your married life? Was it something you met kind of months, once a month with the friends and stuff like that? It, it sure was. Um, uh, for a while he did it mostly with uh, a couple of other guys. And then I did finally join in. I finally got confident enough. So we played, uh, mm-hmm. he and I, he as the game master, me as the player, uh, for a while mm-hmm. until I gained more confidence. And then I joined the, the main group of, uh, um, our friends, uh, Jim, Rich and Dwayne. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, we played for years after that. Um, pretty much weekly and Den and I did move south but every time we would go back to visit uh, the relatives in Iowa we would always get together and play 
Um, um, since uh, he's been uh, off this plane of existence, uh, I had been playing, no, and until uh, I finally realized that I had this treasure to, to bring to the world. And so I'm now finally getting back into it and getting out there and, and uh, reconnecting with uh, all the, the gaming culture and the gaming people. And it's been really great. Um, I, I do definitely feel like I'm in with my people, my tribe. Was it just was it just too difficult to kind of go through the stuff? Was there just like far too many memories that any time you kind of went through a book, it was like, ah, damn, you know, here we go again, kind of thing. Was it that kind of? <laughs> it it was. Uh, um. Uh, it would it had been several years, so it wasn't quite that hard. But mm. I do really wish that he was here on this plane. I do believe he's helping me from the next plane. That's for sure. And I, I tell him all the time, you come and help me game master here, buddy. And uh, um, when I, I go to these cons and and uh, and uh or do these things, I usually wear um, his wedding ring and mm. uh, and and uh, uh, tell him, hey, focus on that and be with me. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, it was it was kind of hard. And uh, uh, one of the things that we're having to do now is uh, um, take the last book, which is on high tech equipment and uh, updating it because mm-hmm. of all the technological changes that we've uh, experienced in the last few years. So uh, myself and uh, my chief play officer, Jim Poland, and um, his oldest son, Josh and sometimes his middle son Jared yeah. are uh, really really helping out with that. Um, Josh and, and uh, Jim also came to uh, Gen Con and helped me run games up there, and uh, so I'm very right. very grateful for all of their help. Yeah, I couldn't do it without the help I've been receiving, and of course from you, you podcasters and and everyone else helping me get the word out. Um, have you got kids then that have been kind of involved? No, uh, no, we did not have children. Right. Okay. Okay. So this is kind of like your legacy to kind of give out to the world in this, this format of this kind of this role role playing game. Um, I mean, let's talk. I mean, let's talk a little bit about kind of every verse. I mean, was it something that you started together? Was it something that kind of that Dennis kind of started off himself and kind of took you to one side and went, you know. Deborah, what do you think of what do you think of this? What's your thoughts on <laughs> um, how did how, how did it kind of come about? Well, um, as I understand it, uh, this was a little bit before I, I joined the group, but mm. um, definitely Jim and uh, Dennis would uh, read novels, science fiction, fantasy novels, but mm. there wasn't a good um, role set, a uh, rule set out there. I mean. Uh, for them to use to bring this novel to life the way they wanted to. Right. So okay. uh, Den started off when we were in college back in the late 70s and early 80s working on this. And I, mm-hmm. I guess that uh, 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 this uh, friend of ours, Jim, was the original player. And he and Dennis would go to the uh, college planetarium and uh, they would play there. So where else, you know, that, what a great place to play, so a space adventure mm-hmm. sitting there looking up in the planetarium. And they even started, and I guess they weren't even using uh, dice and character sheets. It was just kind of an imagination. And then Dennis started working on the rules, and uh, um, then it became more of official play testing. And, uh, yes, he shared uh, um, all of this with me uh, after we got married in the early 80s. And mm-hmm. it was uh, it, it was just amazing watching him him work on this. Unfortunately, sometimes I wish I would have paid closer attention. <laughs> I really had to pour over the books I, now uh, yeah. and and uh, really try to uh, get a good understanding. There are a couple things that I still am a little weak on, but um, in in uh, most of our adventures, especially the one shot demos, uh, I've been kind of skating by on on uh, on the aging and so on. And uh, I'm I'm uh, uh, I, I wish I would have found all of his notes sooner, so I could have gotten more things into the first book. And so uh, yeah, so it was a matter of digging through everything that I had from him, um, after he passed and and. Uh, uh, trying to find everything, and some of it was was difficult. I, like I said, I really wish he was here to do the game mastering because he was so good yeah. at it. He always said it was like uh, peeling the uh, uh, peeling an onion. 
with uh, all the different <laughs> layers. And uh, uh, we had one adventure. I think it went like 80 sessions, uh, and that was pretty wow. much uh, weekly. And it was we started off as like I don't know, you know, space adventures, and ended up as uh, guardians mm-hmm. of good and evil, and uh, um, practically gods ourselves. And and uh, and so it was quite quite the peel of an onion, I must say. Was it quite kind of um, free flowing? I mean, was that the idea of the kind of the system? It was basically almost like here's your foundation, and whatever you want to do, yeah, it's- you can go ahead and do it. There's the flexibility there to to take into account changes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have uh, five different ways you can generate a character. Uh, you can start mm-hmm. from the top of the the uh, uh, the are the basic, shall we say, of the character attributes and get an, uh, an, a, a number assigned there, and then let it flow down through all to the more specific. Or you can start at a specific end, uh, um, and then there are like three others that you can do. Um, and uh, uh, the skills cascade is, a, is the same way. We, um, it, we uh, call it a, a cascade because you can go from general, like um, I have a general knowledge of vehicles to more specific. Mm-hmm. I want to be in, in uh, 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 you know, airplanes and and i want to find a certain kind of airplane and so you can have uh, your skills uh, uh more specific and then you can play at any level so if uh, the person who has vehicle skills maybe wants to try to drive a car but uh, mm-hmm. so they can they can uh, try using that level of the skill but if they want to fly their their airplane they they use another level of the skills cascade so that uh, uh, they have more specific knowledge and would likely be more successful. And then we uh, um, tried to have just one rule, the attempt on on how yeah. to resolve all actions. So that, uh, uh, the, I guess uh, the basic um, thought was to keep people's nose out of the books so that you could create a story rather than be rules lawyers. That's kind of the type of thing where you get sometimes when you're playing um I guess any kind of like, you know, RPG, you get somebody that says, okay, I want to, you know, skillfully open the door. And it's like, well, here, let me check what what you've got to check in order to do that. Or, you know, I want to ride, I want to, uh, ride the horse without a saddle, you know, standing up on its back while shooting an arrow at this tree. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, good okay, luck with we'll that. Huh? <laughs> and so we have, uh, uh, you know, like, here's the action whatever skill or ad- attribute you want to apply to it, you have your score on that. You have some modifiers like you're, you know, you're trying to unlock the door and, and you're really fast because there's mm-hmm. some bad guys on your tail. Uh, so we have a modifier mm-hmm. of minus 20 and then roll. Wow. And if you, uh, um, if you roll at or below your, the score that you have brought to bear your skill or attribute score, then you succeed. Uh-huh. Otherwise you fail. So it's it's pretty straightforward and uh, um, flexible. In terms of then the play testing, do you get like a lot of? Um, do you try and get kind of as much feedback as possible for kind of like the the play testing side of things? Uh, we uh, play tested it a lot during the um, the development years of the of the nineties and the early two mm-hmm. thousands, and so uh, got a lot of feedback from uh, our friends in the gaming group. Uh, now I, uh, um, I I may get some feedback when I take it out to the to the game shops, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I've heard that uh, um, the event coordinators have gotten some feedback, and all of it has been positive. With the feedback that you get, do you do you kind of make amendments and changes, or do you kind of leave it as is and kind of have a side kind of cliff notes for people to go to kind of refer to? I mean, are you quite happy kind of making amendments and changes, and as you go and kind of develop it even further. That's probably going to be a V two thing, but I really have not received anything too specific. I, I know a couple of people have uh, suggested that we have an app that will do the dice mm-hmm. rolling for us. And so we do have one. Mm-hmm. I just need to make it a little bit more official. And uh, that way, then, okay. um, uh, get it out there for people to download and have somebody who can uh, um, keep it updated for um, operating system changes. 
So that, that's been the most uh, that people would really like to have an, uh, a dice roller app. Um, and the other feedback that I've received has been uh, like a little bit on the, the uh, demo scenario. So I've, I've, uh, I've tweaked the mm-hmm. demo scenario a little bit, uh, but nothing much on the actual game mechanics themselves, except for the dice rolling. Has it been has it been wildly available then? Have people been able to, I mean, or has it only been quite recently that people could get their hands on a copy of, you know, the every verse? Um, it's been out, uh, the basic manual's been out since uh, uh, twenty uh, late 2015. And so right, um, okay. the, the people who back my Kickstarter have it. And then it's available on uh, drive through RPG. Uh, dot com as mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, electronic PDF or hard or soft copy books, and that's where the other two supplements are as well. And uh, of course, the Kickstarter people have gotten the other two supplements. Um, still working on the the third supplement, the, that high tech equipment that I mentioned. It's also available mm-hmm. um, an ebook. All three of them are available as ebook um, on Amazon or um, uh, Barnes and Noble for their Nook. Um, Let's see. Uh, Lulu.com is the one that has produced the ebooks for me. So yeah, we're out yeah, there in all yeah. possible forms, I think. <laughs> and, I mean, what kind of made you decide to put it out there in the first place? I mean, surely it could have been something you could have just sat there and went, right, okay, it's going to be something I'm going to play with the group. Um, but what made you decide, actually, I'm going to put this out here. I, I want as many people to see it as possible. Well, I guess uh, um, because it's a good system and I'm doing it in my husband's mm-hmm. honor, I would really, really, really love to make a gaming company uh, and continue some development. Uh, I'm going to need some help with that world book. Um, then also left behind, mm-hmm. uh, uh, what is it, uh, 10... Uh, 10 Errors of Future History, which is the, the second supplement, but each one of those, mm-hmm. except for the last one, has two adventure ideas. So I would like to produce the these as uh, canned modules at some point, and then continue other developments. Uh, a gentleman named Jeremy in Hawaii uh, really uh, loved the system, and so he did some development as well, so I'd like to include him. So basically, I want to create a company out of it, and then... Uh, hire all my friends and we can all gain for the rest of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that I have the company right now. It's mostly me yeah. and some volunteer yeah. help from Jim and his sons, as I mentioned. And, uh, yeah. um, and so I really want to be able to make it an official company that rivals wizards of the coast. <laughs> so if people are purchasing the actual, any of the kind of the, I guess the every verse kind of core game, are they getting campaigns included as part of that, or are you just offering the kind of the system so they can go ahead and build their own worlds? Right now, it's just the system, so that uh, I say we provide the structure and you provide the setting. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. So it allows then if somebody has, if somebody wants to play through, um, kind of like a Star Wars game, then they can use your system if they're wanting to do. You know, if they're wanting to do a Lord of the Rings thing, they can do something. If they're wanting to do like a bank heist, yes, then mm-hmm. it's the ability for the. Is it the flexibility that you're offering then that people then can go ahead and they can, they can take any setting that they want, but it's allowing them to kind of bring what you're offering to the table then. Right. I heard uh, someone might want to use it for a John Wick type campaign. Um, yeah. We have uh, um, one demo that I've been taking around to the game shops and cons where the uh, mm. uh, um, young people are, well, the, the characters, I should say, are uh, young people and uh, they are in a, a uh, Earth-like near future world where they have mm-hmm. uh, uh, the possibility of uh, psychic abilities, but they don't know it yet. And uh, so they are uh, uh, kidnapped to uh, help them manifest their powers by a nefarious organization. And uh, so, you know, what are you guys going to do about that now? Um, And the other demo is that I've been doing is a uh, um, um, crossover between uh, 19 or 1876 uh, possible Harry Potter sort of setting and steampunk. Mm-hmm. 
So <laughs> quite a quite a difference there in, in our demo scenarios. Mm -hmm. And how are they how are they being received? I take it's been very positive and and how they've kind of been playing it. Oh out yeah, now. they've been very positive. It I uh, I find it very interesting, especially as a new game master who actually has a plan that nobody has followed really. Uh, and I'm so I'm learning the the game master lament of that. Uh, that each time it's a it's a different story. Uh, one of the the uh, uh, scenarios that I I ran up at the uh, uh, at Gen Con, the guys wanted to they got their powers they they uh, they broke away and they wanted to go on a bank heist for some reason, <laughs> and and that wow. was the, the running the same scenario as I did you know here in the local game shops, and they never wanted to do that they just wanted to go and hide somewhere or uh, um, uh, I took one of them to. Uh, uh, another research facility where they thought they were going to be safe, but eh, maybe not. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the uh, um, the other demo that we have, uh, some people managed to contain the bad guy, like you know the boss, and uh, then mm -hmm. went on to share knowledge with the ancient people that were at this facility that they found and revived. And another. Uh, group that played it, uh, I believe they were all killed by the boss. So it's it's just been uh, amazing how each group has created its own story. Has it been strange being on the GM side, <sighs> actually having to kind of help oh, yeah. direct and control stuff? Has that been like a, has that been an awful lot out of your comfort zone? Now? Oh, it, that's that's pretty well outside my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, as especially as uh, you know, former IT professional, I you know I'm used to the cubicle where I sit and do my little little programming, and yeah. I meet with the users on occasion when I have to, or you know go to the meetings that are mm. necessary. But this is a whole different world, and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving. It. I never ever thought that I would be a DM and then our game master GM, um, and then actually love doing it. In fact, just did it yesterday. We had a uh, one of the local game shops had a a convention within their store, and so I was out there presenting it and uh, and played uh, uh, with two different groups and uh, a totally different experience with each of them. It, it was it was fun, loads of fun. Do you do character voices and stuff like that? I, I sort of not not too much, but I I do try to at least adopt a different personality if. If the, the NPC warrants it, like uh, uh, one of the characters is is a a very uh, um, uh, self confident, uh, um, charismatic uh, gentleman, and so I'll, I'll try to drop, adopt maybe his haughty yet charming attitude when I, I would talk to the players. Or um, at this actually at this point, he's not so much talking to the players as he's talking about them in front of them <laughs> all right all right and is that again that must be again kind of pretty far out of the comfort zone because if it's a convincing game i know you get some people that just you know they kind of play it quite straight laced and they just like say okay well this is you've met this you know you've met this bar owner or or here's the guy that runs the tannery or here's the person that's the head of the it infrastructure and this is what you've said to you kind of thing and they, they kind of it takes, I think, a specific type of person to really kind of act out those roles. But, you know, on the other side, you do get people that are kind of going with kind of full bravado. And I guess if you're trying to get people at the end of the day to jump on and buy the system, it's almost like, well, you have to <laughs> I can take it. You, you have to provide this extra bit of characterization, I guess, to provide to provide the excitement and to get them kind of invested in it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do try, especially with the uh, um, the researcher who is part of the uh, the the teen teen scenario. Uh, give her a little bit more mm -hmm. life than uh, uh, just uh, telling. Uh, you know, basically, you know, show rather than tell. And so I'll, I'll try to you know give a little demo about you know her hands might be shaking as she uh, as she tries to uh, uh, give them an inoculation or something like that. And so I, I do try to provide a little bit more and not just tell them, you know, OK, this guy is talking to you and says mm -hmm. yada yada. And and do you believe him or not? Yeah. And, uh, and so I'm still working on that. What's the um, what's the community been like? 
I mean, how how have you found it? Um, kind of stepping out, you know, out there. But you know, four or five years ago, was it fairly welcoming? Have you you know, have you found it kind of easy or kind of difficult to kind of introduce the system to people? I found that they are very welcoming. I am excited hmm. to uh, be doing it because of that. Like I, I feel like I am. Uh, connecting with my tribe finally. And, uh, um, it was mm-hmm. great to, uh, apply to and, and be accepted by the international game designers network so that, uh, um, I can, my reach is farther than just, you know, basically here in the Houston area. Yeah. And, and so it, it's good to, um, you know, you'll be able to have people that you can discuss ideas with as well as uh, going out and uh, talking to people about the system. And also I've gotten into, a, um, a, um, what, what is it? A, I guess it's a, uh, what is it? A 501c3 here, a, uh, a nonprofit. Uh, one of the gentlemen who was an a, a right. event co- a coordinator at a local game shop has started um, its uh, positive awareness through ludology and um, they're taking All taking right. games into some of the uh, lesser privileged areas of town and uh, trying to help the, mm-hmm. the young children at, with gaming to to help them develop a positive awareness of themselves because some, sometimes the rest of their experience isn't so good and it's it's really fantastic to be a part of that and I also enjoyed uh, run, running so, games uh, at uh, what they call Extra Life, where uh, we were playing yeah. for charity. And so people could come and play and make yeah, a donation. Yeah, I had the Extra Life, yeah. yeah. So those have been very rewarding as well as as fun. So were you getting actually in, involved in the community stuff mm-hmm. yourself then? Were you kind of DMing at the, or GMing at the community stuff? Yes. Yeah? And that must be dealing with a new audience who might may have some experience of playing role playing but again as you said might not have any kind of experience at all that's right and uh, i have yet to be able to actually go out to and present the game uh, with the uh, um, positive awareness through ludology group but i have uh, been working with the, the mm. in the background with uh, the folks and we're we're talking about uh, you know some some uh, yeah, basic psychological concepts so that how people may be able to deal with the, the kids who are, are uh, having some issues. I talked to a teacher yesterday who is uh, trying to use gaming to reach kids who are um, uh, ESL, uh, English as a second language uh, um, students, and yeah, uh, yeah. also kids who, who might be having some issues now with our crazy immigration stuff that's going on over here. And, and so, um, I was talking with her how she might use our system to uh, help and work with these kids. And uh, so I, I would love to to hear more of her stories and if she is able to use the system to make a, a scenario for them. I, I, I gave her one yeah. of the, our books and uh, at free of charge and, and said, you know, hey, let me know if you have any questions I can help with. Uh, please let me know how, um, if I can help or how things are going. Uh, because I'd mm-hmm. like to to know if she can she figures out how she can create a setting that she can can interact with these kids and and also give them a positive experience. Yeah, I think um, as you said yourself, I think in this kind of day and age, there needs to be a stronger sense of yes. community from all sides. So the people need to keep kind of pull together because. Um, you know, as they say, divided we kind of fall, and um, the, I think at the moment one of the ways to we need a lot more positivity. We need people kind of working, working mm-hmm. together, um, and understanding each other's differences to kind of reach a, a kind of a middle ground, which I think is is becoming more and more kind of important. Um, you went to Kickstarter. Um, that must have been a bit of a was that a bit kind of a a departure, something a bit that must have a, a huge oh, learning really? curve as well, because I'm guessing that you don't just go out kind of crowdfunding stuff every <laughs> single day. So was that? Uh, yes, like? that was. Uh, um, I, I I hadn't really even thought about doing it until I started doing just a little bit of teaser advertising in some Facebook groups, and uh, 
Everybody yeah. that I talked to said, where's your Kickstarter? Where's your Kickstarter? And I said, oh, well, okay, maybe I should do one. Um, I don't know how many times I, I bet it was at least 20 times I recorded the video because I, I wouldn't like something or I tear up at the end. And, and of course I, I said stuff about, you know, how Den had developed this and, and, uh, he, um, didn't yeah. live to see it published. And, uh, um, it took me many years after his death to, to get to the point where I could put it out there. And, and also I, I got laid off from my job. So then I, I had more time to focus on it. And, and so it, it was a tough video even though i had a script written it was still tough to to do and yeah. uh i uh i was really embarrassed uh, another uh, a- an actual play podcast folks were gonna um they did it and the guy said okay we're gonna start off with the kickstarter video and and he played it and so i i, I was listening in to their play and i had to pull the the earbud yeah. out of my ear so i didn't hear myself otherwise i was going to be sitting there and crying <laughs> And so I, I put it back up to my ear. Oh, damn, it's still going. And I put it back up to my ear. Oh, no, it's still going. <laughs> and uh, then, you know, trying to, to – uh, uh, and I, I don't like pe- asking people for money. Uh, I never have. And so, uh, you know, even mom for my allowance and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, um, I'm, I'm yeah. happy that I have mostly um, uh, taken care of all of the levels of the Kickstarter and gotten product out there. We still have uh, the last book to go. And, uh, and so I am, I'm anxious to do it, but yeah, doing the Kickstarter was, uh, something I never thought I would be doing. And I, uh, uh, it worked. I'm very grateful that it worked, but, oh boy, yeah, it was tough. And then to figure out how to advertise it and, uh, and, and try to get the money and, and, uh, you know, you have to get it fulfilled in a month or you don't get anything and you have to fully fund it or you don't get anything. And, and so it was, it was, uh, it was stressful, but I'm, I'm very grateful that for the response that I, I did receive. Were you surprised at the response that you get then? Because I mean, normally nowadays you hear on Kickstarters, there's like so much work to do and you need to be almost like a professional marketer to kind of get traction. So you kind of put out where he was, you kind of like, well, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, at least we kind of tried kind of thing. Yeah, I put it out there with the hopes, and I had uh, um, some some professional help with it. Um, uh, personally, I uh, I'm not sure I would recommend the personal help, uh, the professional help uh, because I'm not sure they hit my market, and uh, and so uh, uh, finding the market was was difficult. But I, like I said, I had everybody asking me for it. And I, mm-hmm. um, I do see that uh, quite a few posts uh, of people will be coming up and saying, oh, hey, new Kickstarter. We're going to interview the, the, uh, the folks with, uh, with this new Kickstarter. And uh, that was, I think, where I was the most successful. Um, yeah, yeah. Finding your market is, is definitely it. And I, I, uh, um, I'm still learning about marketing because, boy, it's, it's tricky. Is it, I mean, again, if you reach – is it easy to reach back out to the community and get kind of feedback on how you think they should be approaching it? Because it's really funny, but the, um, even though board games on tabletop are a huge multi-million dollar business and you'll see Kickstarters of board games kind of easily reaching kind of like millions of dollars. Oh, the, yeah. um, in terms of, um, in terms of kind of, I guess, uh, um, success, and hitting mainstream, I mean, it's still role playing games that seem to have the kind of the one up, you know, which is, you know, I mean, if you just have to think about, like, say, Critical Role um, and the success that they had in their Kickstarter and also what they're doing on a kind of like a day by day basis for the hobby, that is like the, the amount of exposure the hobby and the role playing side of games has got has been absolutely massive, even compared to kind of like the, the kind of the board game kind of industry which is kind of which to me is kind of st- still very very fascinating that we the board game side of things considers itself to be in a huge kind of growth period and kind of the RPG side of things is just saying hey give me a second hold my beer <laughs> kind of yeah, kind exactly of, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah kind of thing um, 
I, I know I would see reports off of Kickstarter and say, oh, so-and-so is funded in like a day. It's like, oh, I wish that would have been mine. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, um, I was very envious of those that were funding so easily. And, and uh, I'm so grateful that mine did fund. It, it funded and uh, fully funded like in the last 12 hours or something like that. I was like, oh, thank goodness. And it actually ended the day after what was the anniversary of my late husband passing. So it was like, okay, then shower some on us, says, please, you know, uh, uh, I'll take it. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's, it, the whole thing, it's just really fascinating because, boy, the folks are really into the board games. And uh, I keep telling uh, other folks, I said, I got to figure out a way to get this uh, into cards and get it on a board or something. <laughs> is uh, going out to the to the uh, uh, the game shops. Everybody's loving the miniatures. And I, and I want to do those, too, at some point. And they're loving the cards. Yeah, this Keyforge and Magic and all these card games. Like, we got to figure out how to how to break into that. So uh, that'll be one of the, the tasks for uh, uh, for the company when we finally get more staff. <laughs> are you going to be um, Are you going to be generating or making a Heathcliff miniature? No, <laughs> he is definitely our chief barking officer, and uh, um, <laughs> he is uh, he has retired to the bedroom now because I'm talking with someone Isn't else. <laughs> Um, oh, is he jealous? Um, He's a jealous dog. He, he, uh, I think he, he gets annoyed sometimes, especially on our walk. If I want to stop and talk to somebody, it's like, oh, geez, we're stopping and talking because mom's got a blab again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he'll, okay, I'll just sit down here and try to be patient. Uh, sometimes he will stand the entire length of the leash plus my arm away from us and, and with wow. his back to us. Like, oh, I get it, I get it. Yeah, you want to go, make, but you're going to have to live with it. Make it his opinion strongly felt Indeed. Then, about the entire and, and, interaction system. <laughs> yes, he is. But yes, I'm sure that if we have a miniature, there will be a Heathcliff miniature. He is. He's just too cute to not have a miniature. And he is. He is a cute. He's a cute guy. He looks like a good dog. He's a very good dog. And you know, there is the there is the wee rate. The We Rate Dogs Twitter account, and I think he would definitely get fourteen out of ten. Oh, thank you! Just because you know, he looks like a he looks like a cheeky little <laughs> looks like a cheeky little chappy. Yep, as he would kind of say. Yeah, he definitely um, knows who rules the roost, and who, and I just pay the rent. <laughs> but I, I <laughs> yeah, I tell him that, uh, um, and I tell that to other people too. But uh, um, uh, a spiritual intuitive told me that uh, my late husband sent him to me. Um, because he couldn't mm. be around me as much as he would like to be. And so uh, yeah. Heathcliff is my family, and he's my sole guide and teacher. So um, he can be a little cheeky. I, I'll, I'll give him that for the, the burden that he has been uh, given. I think uh, I think that any guide that goes takes you through your life has a complete right to be a bit cheeky. Yeah, at you. <laughs> indeed. Kind of now and again, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, you know. Indeed. Um, you got to have a bit of fun as well as the kind of the, the serious, the serious kind of stuff as well. Do you um, do you get a chance to kind of play games yourself regularly? Then I mean, have you have you kind of touched into the board game side of things? Are you still predominantly doing kind of role playing games? I mean, are you getting a chance to do anything like that? Uh, for the most part, it's been uh, me putting this out and being a game master right now. I have not gotten right. into uh, um, just going over to the game shops and, and playing something else. Um, I think I um, okay. I, I was uh, when I did Comic Palooza here. I, I watched some folks play uh, the latest version of Paranoia, and uh, yeah. um, let's see, uh, watched a few people play Keyforge one night at, at another shop. So mostly uh, observer of other games and uh, uh, game master player of this. I, and I did play up at, at uh, Mars at, at uh, uh, Gen Con. Uh, we didn't have uh, in, yeah. uh, we had only two for for uh, the the two o'clock session of of uh, at one table. And so uh, uh, Jim, who was who was the game master at that session, uh, tossed a character sheet at me and said, "Play, okay." <laughs> No problem. Okay. So I think I did a really good job of not giving away the scenario since I uh, we, he was playing. Yeah. He was GM in the same one that I I have been doing. So um, that's that's been mostly my activities in in the gaming world these days. 
Are you tempted to go out and try a couple of other kind of things? Are you solely concentrating just at the moment on on kind of um, on getting every verse kind of everywhere? I'd have to say I'm concentrating on getting it everywhere. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, that's absolutely Yeah, I was going to say, no offense to anybody no. else uh, and, and their game products, but uh, yeah, this is, it's a, a lot for one person to be doing because I'm doing pretty much yeah. everything. And I'm uh, like I've said, I'm so grateful for the help that I have been receiving. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot to do and uh, um, I'm happy to do it. I, I've been having a, such a, uh, an amazing time doing it. And I remember when uh, I first said I was going to do this, Jim asked me if there was any uh, market left for this. So I started looking around. Uh, yeah, it looks like it. And now I'm finding out as I keep going along, it's like, oh, my God, there are you know, all these podcasts and actual play and yeah. interview and, and uh, you know, playing out of the game shops and all the cons. I said, yeah, I think we've still got a market for this. <laughs> Very much so. I'm always I'm always eternally surprised by the number of kind of um, um, kind of playing live play kind of role playing podcasts that are out there, and they're always they're usually, they're always really really good fun because you get to know you get to know the characters after a period of time. Um, there's um, there's one that I listened to which is kind of finishing up at the moment their second season. Which was a quest for uh, magic and steel, um, and the the games master, the GM that's running that, she was amazing. She just managed. She was doing voices, doing all the different characters. It was fun. You really kind of got to to know the people. There's a couple others I listened to, um, Nerd Therapy being the other one, which is just a group of people trying to get their way through a campaign for goodness knows how long. With an, and as they say, with varying degrees of success, and um, there's they've got the characters dropping in, characters dropping out, people dropping houses on each oh. other, people setting <laughs> each other on fire, oh, you know, taking into you know that kind of yeah, that's just kind of that kind of um, absolutely fantastic type of um, scenario. So they're they're definitely um, good fun and and ones that I can kind of continue to. To kind of listen to, and especially Quest for Magic and Steel, because they're all they're just one big huge family. So it's like it's the dad, and it's like oh wow, four, four or five oh, kids wow. basically all playing it. Um, and if you know, um, they're all kind of they're not young. Um, you know, they're they're kind of, um, yeah. But it's it's such a it's a fun podcast because you know they know each other behind uh-huh. it, and they know each other very well. So they're able to play each off off each oh, that'd other. Be a hoot. Kind of very well, so that kind of that's kind of it's, it's kind of kind of good. Yeah, I had a, a family play. Uh, I had a family play at at uh, one of the the conventions, and the dad played the bad guy, and he actually killed one of his kids' characters. <laughs> I thought that was okay, Dad. That was it was kind of fun, and and I, the kid was a little shocked, but uh, took it pretty well. I thought, good, good. I, you guys got a good relationship there. Exactly. Which is yeah, exactly. Nothing better than that. Um, have you figured out what your elevator pitch is for every verse yet? Well, uh, kinda. I I had to give one uh, the gentleman who wanted to do the John Wick uh, 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 campaign, perhaps using our rules. I had to give him one, and and so uh, should I give it? I think let's do a drum roll. Okay. Go for it. And okay, uh, well, we have five methods of uh, generating a character, and uh, the skill scores and the attribute scores are all based on uh, the same scale as the IQ scores, uh, the standard distribution, where one hundred is the average. So you know that if you have a score above one hundred, you're above average. And below, you are uh, below average in whatever skill or, or, or attribute. We roll 4d10, and then uh, um, that's part of the attempt. It, with uh, The attempt is uh, whatever the action is, and the skill or attribute score that you bring to bear, uh, plus or minus modifiers, and look it up in a table that will give you a, uh, a resulting 
a score of 60, somewhere between 60 and 139. And if you roll uh, at or below the skill score or attribute score for this uh, action, then you succeed. Otherwise, you fail. Our skills are in cascades from general to specific so that you can uh, have a skill like vehicle um, and then you can get more specific with uh, air, fixed wing, airplane, three different levels, and then you can play that uh, type of a skill at any level and uh, uh, bring to bear uh, general knowledge versus uh, specific knowledge. Uh, we also have uh, equalizers, so you can make your character a little quirky and get some points that you can add mm -hmm. to uh, your skills. And or um, uh, if it's a minus at equalizer like uh, anxiety, for example, that's a modifier for all of your roles where you might be anxious. Uh, plus, we have um, tables for converging, conversion from other systems. And also some uh, uh, rules that you can play a character and develop them, kind of like a karma system. The end. And you can do anything at all. Any setting that you like. So if you want to be various different... Anything at all. So if you want to be various condiments in a fridge, deciding how to get out of that fridge, <laughs> this is the system for uh, you. Yep. If you decide... If you, if you decide... Well, you know, I'm just... <laughs> grasping that out of thin well, air. Well, somebody that I talked to you know, uh, had um, a character that was a uh, unicorn detective. And so I suppose you could be a unicorn detective and uh, uh, investigate whatever unicorn in, uh, detectives investigate. <laughs> Playing this, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, who's been leaving the glit? Who's been leaving the glittery horse poo everywhere? <laughs> and it turns out it was a unicorn detective. Could be. <laughs> um, <laughs> If people want to, um, if people want to get a hold or find out more about the Everyverse RPG, where can they find you on the internet web? We are at triple w dot dot com, and that is P A R D E N for Parisic Dennis Us Gaming, and it's all one word. Okay, and is that where that comes from then? Yes. Cool. Excellent. Um, and what we'll do is um, I will make sure I get all the links from you for where you can actually also buy the books as well. Yeah. Okay, and great. all uh, these other things. All of them. Um, uh, the website is, is linked uh, to all the places as well. So there you go. Except for maybe there Amazon. That could be Amazon. Shmamazon. <laughs> but we'll make yeah, who sure doesn't know about we'll Amazon? Sure Exactly. But we'll make sure that we put all the links in the show notes so that we have got notes to show. Um, if you good people want to find out where we exist, go to the internet and search for We Are Not Wizards and you shall find us. Or, But do it well, because otherwise we might just decide to come out and find you instead. <laughs> um, but, you know, but we're on, we've got our website, we've got our blog, we've got our Instagram, we've got our... Um, we've got our Twitter, and you can find us on all the podcast catchers. Some of them have got the word pod in them. Some have got, got the word cast in them. Some of them have got none in them, neither pod or cast, which is strange, but therefore true. If you like what you've listened to tonight, um, check out the show notes. Um, if you want to help us out a bit, tell other people about us, where we exist. If you want to do something even more special for us, jump onto Apple Podcasts and give us a rating or a review. And uh, if you are going to be giving us a rating or review, don't give us 10 stars, because it makes us far too big-headed. But don't give us one star, because it makes us cry. Give us something like a five, because it's in the middle, and it's a little bit average. And we are just, just a little bit average, basically. But the person who's not been average is the rather wonderful, the rather fantastic. I bring you Deborah Honig Parizek. Um, thank you very much for coming on, Deborah. It's oh, been a pleasure. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure talking to you as well. Um, there's only two more things to do. The first thing is to remember that we're many things, but we're not wizards. Are we wizards, Deborah? I don't think so.
I know I'm not. I'll take that. That's good enough for me. That's good <laughs> enough for me. Um, I might be. Um, and the other thing is to. I suspect say you are actually. So, <laughs> don't even start there. Remember, I'm editing this, and it can all go very nastily. Um, and the other thing <laughs> is to say goodbye. So it's a uh, goodbye from Deborah. Say goodbye, Deborah. Goodbye, Deborah. <laughs> And it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Remember, stay safe. Roll sixes. Make something awful. And um, if you fancy just role playing, but you don't want to be here, there, maybe you should be everywhere in the everyverse. But until the next time, goodbye. Wizard is never linked. Is he early? He arrives precisely when he means to. Mm-hmm.